tankers and tankettes, and welcome to the contest winners video for the tier 7 and 8 bracket. Now, if you guessed any of the vehicles that you're about to see would have been winning vehicles for this particular bracket, well, well done. You are the king and or queen of guessing things, because I would not have predicted any of them. I also want to foreshadow things a little bit by saying the second place, the guy that won that, or possibly gal, I'm not sure, Basically, that 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 entry that looked like it was going to be the winner for quite a while, and then I think just a few days before the contest deadline, there was another one that just pipped it, and it was going to have to be spectacular to beat the second place, and oh boy, it was. So without any further ado, let's go and take a look at the first of our winners, and here we are. Congratulations to Observer Four Thirteen who has managed to get himself third place in an IS-6. Yeah, you weren't expecting that, were you? I wasn't either. An IS-3 maybe, or a tank destroyer? Maybe one of the other heavies, you know, a T-32? Even a T-29, that's got the same gun. And there were some pretty good T-29 entries, I have to say. But no, it's an IS-6, which actually has worse penetration than a T-29. Now, the reason it's somewhat surprising is this gun is not the most reliable, the penetration is alright when you're top tier, as Observer is here, but even when you're top tier, that doesn't make your gun any more accurate. It does, however, mean that the 175 average pen doesn't matter so much. He has got a few rounds of APCR, but from... well, you'll see what the damage is going to be. You would not expect to be able to do all of this with just AP. So here's his first uh, customer, a T69, who happened to be looking in entirely the wrong direction. Unfortunately, Observer is where enemy artillery can hit him. Fortunately, it's only tier 6 artillery, but even so, yeah, he's just wasted his repair kit and he's also put himself in not the best position, to be honest. He does get quite lucky here. It's basically the IS-6 armor that saves him, and he's, you know, having wasted his uh, repair kit already so early in the game and taken that big chunk of damage, and he's getting shot at from by uh, uh, a VK that he can't see, and still getting shot at by artillery. Quite honestly, it's not the most auspicious start to a match, and you wouldn't look at this and think, well, this is going to be an amazing match, because it really doesn't start out as an amazing match. And here, well, being aggressive can be good, but there's no guarantee that that T-69 wouldn't have switched to premium ammo to deal with uh, an IS-6. So, yeah, I, I don't know that that was the smartest move exactly, but on the other hand, it's not like he could wait for backup. It's the case in this battle where his team actually, a bunch of people did come up to the high ground. Of course, there are a bunch of tank destroyers watching over the valley, because that's what tank destroyers tend to do on this map. But there are people that actually came up, and the enemy team weren't really contesting the, the middle that heavily. We can see there's an IS-2 there, and observers managed to hurt that guy. But the heavies that did go around, and met a bunch of their heavies around the uh, outside of the hill, they're being pushed back rather badly, so it doesn't look like they're going to last that much longer. That 3002M is awfully optimistic. He's trying to pepper the front armour with uh, a, a, of an IS-6 with his, uh, what is it, 150 average pen? Yeah, good luck with that. So he's spotted there's a tiger down there on from the enemy side, obviously from the enemy side. So... Maybe there's going to be other stuff camping, but I don't know, it, it depends. I think his initial thought is he's going to go round and... Oh, hello. Yeah, that's that VK again. Boom! Ammo rack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotta love it. And he does actually spot that there's an ARL-44 back there. So I think his plan's to go round, maybe try and catch those heavies on the enemy team from behind. They kind of get scuppers, because first off, the VK... He basically gives the VK his side and so gets penned that way. And then discovers there's an ARL and he knows there's a tiger down there as well. So the ARL's fallen back and rather than go and engage them, he actually turns to basically uh, get the, the, the rear of these tanks that have pushed around. Because this is a perfect opportunity. He's playing a bit smarter at this point. The initial engagement with that T-69 could have been better, but now he has got basically a shooting gallery of stuff, and they're all damaged as well. They didn't get around that corner unscathed, at least for the most part. The enemy AMX M4 still has full hit points, 
And while he doesn't really have armor to be worried about, his gun, if he's got the top gun, will be dangerous. And yeah, that is the top 90 mil. So 212 pen, you can't absolutely guarantee that you're going to bounce, especially if he's got shots up at your lower front plate. So he's being cautious, he's using this ref, but he still takes a hit. It's not a particularly high alpha gun, so you can stand to take a couple of hits. But the thing is, the more hit points you lose now, the more you might wish you had them later. However, he gets taken out by an ISU, I think that is, on uh, our team, one of the defenders, who are, you know, they're doing their best. They are besieged on all sides at this point, but Observer has taken the pressure off rather a lot. There's now only one tank firing from up here rather than the three or four that there would have been. So he's going to come up behind this 112, who is a... Well, not quite a one-shot, but he's low health anyway. Well, low health? What am I talking about? He's, he's taken some damage. Wow. Brain, just just catch up, would you? Anyway, perfect shots into the rear armour. He did have some APCR loaded because he thought he might be facing the guy's front. If that 112 had been paying attention, he might have turned around to face Observer. But no, rear armour is absolutely no problem. So back to the regular AP. And bam, there we go. Now he's down. So we've stabilised things a bit. We have two tank destroyers, a T-28, uh, a T-28, yes, one of those, and I think that's an SU-152. And we've skipped ahead slightly because basically he goes to the middle to spot and discovers that the ARL has actually gone round the side of the hill. Now, the ARL might have the same guns as the AMX M4, so again, using that wreck as cover, and he's actually got his back to the rock because... The tiger hasn't been spotted in a while, and he might actually have a tiger in his butt, and as we all know, that's rather painful indeed. And, oh, hello, yep, okay, Panzer 4S shooting his flank with premium ammo, but he's a tier 6, so, you know, it's not exactly unexpected. This is a bit bad, he's actually got to now get his front in that direction, but the ARL is so low health that he's probably not going to be particularly aggressive at this stage. He really can't afford to be. Oh, well, there we go. There's the Panzer 4S spotted. And that is such a lucky shot. The reticle was far from fully aimed, and yet it went in anyway. So, yeah, that was very, very, very lucky for this gun. Artillery takes another pot shot. Luckily, it splashes for only a little bit. He couldn't have afforded to take... I, I don't know what that... that French Arty could have done with a hit if it hadn't penned, but um, you know, 400 hit points lost at this stage would be very nasty, for instance. So that's the ARL down, and we're now down to two people, the Shy Tiger and the Enemy Artillery. And there's the Tiger, who finally puts in an appearance, way, way too late to be of any help to his team. He's basically, uh, you know, thrown any chance he had of turning this back. So, this is quite comfortable at this point, provided Observer doesn't just get nuked by artillery, of course. So, one hit into the side, it might take another two or three to take this guy down, but that's fine, that's all damage that uh, Observer, uh, you know, he wants the damage. Unfortunately, he takes a hit that, uh, oh, boom, another ammo rack. He takes a hit, probably through the front of the turret, which manages to damage Observer's gun. An IS-6 with a damaged gun is a very sad thing indeed. And he can't repair it because he used his repair kit so early. So all that's left now is enemy artillery. And although that last hit he took was unfortunate, it doesn't really matter. Now I fast forwarded, artillery did get spotted, observer took a couple of pot shots from longer range but with a damaged gun it was never going to hit. And basically with seven kills, I can't remember offhand if he asks to get the last kill. I think he does. But basically, the T-28 that's trundled all this way, I don't know if he intentionally obliges, or if it's just Observer happens to be in a much faster tank. I know the, the ISU was certainly, you know, the, his team were praising him because he just did such a stellar job in this one. So, to get a Radley Walters is just the icing on the cake, and he does, there we go. So his team were, for the most part, I think actually they were intentionally holding off, and... Although, uh, you know, mixed feelings on actually asking for that in a battle. If you do happen to ask for it and your team are nice enough to oblige, or even better, if your team just offer, you know, if you've got 
one or two teammates left and you are one kill away from a medal and they go you know what you have it and you get that medal because you've just done so much in this battle that is actually always just it's just nice and it just goes to show that there are nice people that play this game it's not all you know jerks and trolls and uh people who are shall we say a bit like caption guy um or maybe that's going a bit too far let's not go overboard Anyway, so how about I actually take a look at the scores before we move on? That got him a Radley Walters, a Steel Wall, a High Calibre, a Top Gun, an Ace Mastery, and he did 6,946 damage with 8 kills and 1,939 base XP. That was quite an impressive result, and yeah, I absolutely started off watching this replay thinking, how on earth is he gonna... But, you know what? All three replays are gonna be like that, so let's actually go and look at our second place, and, you know, bearing in mind what I said at the beginning as well, and we'll see how they did. And our second place winner is, and so nearly the first place, for a while I thought it was gonna be first place, Emperor Nefarious 1, who's actually platooned up with Emperor Honourable. Total coincidence? I, I don't know. Maybe they were both feeling lonely in their respective Imperial palaces and decided to find another Emperor to hang out with, because who else are you going to hang out with when you're an Emperor? You're not going to spend your time, um, you know, waste your time even uh, with the... The, the, pin, the pinions! The pinions, yes! Not peons, not minions, the pinions. Yes, yes. So, who honestly expected a Ferdy? to be winning any prizes in this bracket. A Borsig, maybe, or a Jagdpanther 2, but a Ferdy? Not even an ISU got close to this. In fact, what was the top ISU result? Was there even a top ISU result? The top ISU result I got was uh, 5,508. That was less than the previous IS6 game, so yeah. Now this is going to be fairly edited, I did cut out rather large chunks of this because he spends quite a lot of time basically sat in this position doing, you know, what he's doing here. I've just highlighted a bit of it where he gets to shoot a couple of things. And you can see that he does, you know, he racks up a bit of damage, a fairly respectable amount of damage just doing this. It's not the most interesting to watch, but he manages to give a decent amount of support to his friendlies on the hill, including, you can see there, Emperor Honourable, that's where he is. And there we go, one into the churchyard. And he's also able to shoot at stuff in the middle, as he is about to. There we go, he's going to turn. Now, this is the 128mm gun. It's a pretty beefy gun. This has only got a 10 second, or slightly over 10 second reload, so... You can actually do a fairly large amount of damage with this, if people leave you alone to do it. And that's basically what happened, at least for the first half of the battle, is he was just able to sit here and spin on the spot, back and forth, support the hill, support the middle, support the hill, support the middle, and pick up a couple of, you know, a, a couple of kills and a respectable amount of damage just doing that. But a respectable amount of damage is not going to get you a prize. So... We're going to go to another jump cut in just a second, and we're going to see things start to get interesting. The 112 that was guarding that side of the tracks has died. And although the numbers, again, don't look that bad, 11-12, there's only one person on the hill who I think it turns out actually disconnected and will reconnect in a bit. Fortunately is still alive. I think that's the panther on this team. Uh, but it's going to be... Things are going to get interesting. Things are going to get very, very interesting indeed. So he thinks somebody's going to pop over there. But there's a Yag Panther on the hill also. So he's going to turn and support because the Panther that's there is incredibly low health. There's also a Tiger 2 that's left with, I think, full health at this point. Who has been sat on the little island for the entire game, doing really not much at all. And yeah, uh-oh, uh-oh, that's an IS-3 shooting from the middle. And an AC-48 shooting from the tracks. And that Yag Panther's still on the hill as well. So suddenly, he's got stuff shooting at him. He's got three sides to try and cover himself from. And that's another friendly tank that's just died. So, um, yeah, I did mention this got interesting very, very quickly, and that T-34-1 is really hurting him. Now, he misses the first shot, unfortunately, and he's a one-shot kill now. He's got, I can't even read how much damage that is, I think it's 4k plus damage. And how is he possibly going to live through this? There's the Panther on the hill, which possibly can't hit him right now, but the... 
AC-46 that's over there on the track certainly can. The T-34-1 is no fool. He's trying to close the distance. And that was an unfortunate shot. He really... Uh, he was trying for a snapshot. You know, he was trying to get that uh, T-34-1 before he actually uh, managed to get forward to where he couldn't be shot at. But instead he just shot the ground in front. And it possibly would have been more productive to shoot the AC-46 instead. For the bounces he's getting. He's so lucky. And at this point... Yep, there's that T-34. At this point, things start to get slightly comic. Now he shoots the turret, which of course bounces. He didn't even go for a commander's hatch, but he must have been panicking at this point. And I was sitting here thinking, surely that AC-46 is going to shoot him in the side, and that's going to be it. Game over. But no, the T-34-1, having closed the distance, having done the sensible thing and used terrain to actually, um, you know, get to within killing distance, then completely throws it all the way. Throws it all the way, throws it all away, even. And the AC-46 does get off one final shot before he dies, but it bounces. Was that not just nail-biting? I think that was fairly nail-biting. So we've got a low-health Jagdpanther on the hill and a full-health IS-3 left. So, yeah, we need that Tiger 2 to really move and do something positive and go to the cap and use his hit points and his armor because Nefarious is in a pretty bad way right now. The IS-3 could probably load HE at this point and depending on where he hit with that HE he might even just be able to, you know, with one shell of that 122 mil gun. So there's the Ag Panther up on the hill. The Panther, even if he's AFK, I think he was still AFK at this point, of course, I can't read the chat because it's in the preview mem uh, menu, menu, window, <laughs> whatever. And uh, I'm going by memory, so that's always dodgy. But the Ag Panther's up there, and even if our Panther is AFK, he can still proxy spot. Now the Panther, is he moving? I can't tell. I don't think he's moving yet at this point, but uh, he will do again before the end of the battle. He does manage to actually reconnect in time. So Nefarious is just going to sit here. He's hoping his binoculars will be enough to actually... Uh, there we go. So finish off the Yag Panther. So that's great. There is going to be no crossfire to worry about. We now have one enemy left alive. We know exactly where he is. And they're both... Um, both Whoever's left even that might not be even alive... I think there are people in the chat who died and they're trying to coax this tiger. Not just the, the other two players that are left alive, but the people left watching. They're all trying to coax this tiger. Go into the cap circle. Use your hit points. And this is the point of the battle where you do. You use your hit points. And yeah, you might get hit in the process, but it's three guns versus one. And that's the crucial thing. If somebody... You know, it's not the most fun job in the world to be a punching bag, but if somebody takes on that role and takes the hits then in that interval when uh, the IS-3 is reloading, they can just pummel him, and they're going to win, if that's the case. If not, then, well, it could go the other way, but there's still he still needs to do at least another, what, 800-odd damage in order to beat the previous damage count. So, we know he must get at least in two more shots, because this gun's got 490 average alpha. So he takes one shot, and he goes in the tracks, that's a bit unfortunate, but the Panther's back, he's pelting this guy with uh, shots into the side of his turret, into his front armour. The Panther's got more than enough penetration, it's just obviously the Alpha isn't particularly uh, strong on the Panther. So there we go, there's one damaging hit, if he can get another one, oh, that, that shot just misses. And, can he get the kill, can he get the kill? Boom, there we go. He's actually nearly out of AP ammo as well. He fired quite a lot of shells in this battle, as it turned out. So, uh, it was... It started, you know, first half of the battle, rather boring, sitting in a bush, turning back and forth, and then, bam, things got interesting very, very quickly. So, an ace mastery, of course, top gun, tank sniper, steel wall, high caliber, and a Spartan medal for bouncing a shot when very low health. He did 7,078 damage with 7 kills. So not quite a Radley Walters, but that was still nearly half the enemy team. And that got him 7, 1,779 base XP. So that was that was the result I thought had won for the longest time. And for an, uh, a Ferdy, that is incredibly impressive, especially how it went at the end there. That was 
adrenaline inducing stuff but however as I mentioned somebody pipped him to the post somebody sent in an even more impressive result and now that is what we are going to get to see next and here we are our winner IGL in a T49 yes that T49 I would have said that this was not a serious tank at all that this was in fact a comedy tank a KV-2 that can go very, very quickly indeed, has less armour, has probably worse gun handling because of it, because you're going so fast and the the uh, the gun has to wait longer to settle down to the still fairly large reticle size, and yet somehow this is the winner. Somehow this game is going to end up being over 7,000 damage, because it has to, to win. And looking at the early bit of the game, well... Yeah, I was wondering how on earth he does it, but uh, you'll see. So he starts off with what I think are the hair shells. People will correct me if I'm wrong. He's got mostly regular HE in this. He also has a couple of heat rounds, which are, I think, the premium shells. I don't know this tank at all. I have not played it. And obviously you can look at the shell in uh, uh, Tank Inspector, but it just gives me the shell name. It doesn't actually tell me exactly what the shell type is. Tank Inspector also doesn't tell you what the premium ammo type is, and because I'm lazy, apparently I didn't go and look up the information elsewhere. But it's not that important, because, like I said, he's mostly got HE. And with the roles he's been having so far, they've not been that impressive. Uh, he doesn't have that much HE. And also, he's got the same reload as the KV-2, 20 plus seconds. So, it seems like a really tall order. What does help him a bit is that he is running with the uh, American premium food consum consumable, which is the case of cola. Now that's quite expensive, but for a machine like the T49, it feels kind of necessary. You know, there are people that run their KV-2 with the food consumable because obviously it helps that bit with everything. And that's true of the T49 as well. And you need every bit of help you can get with a gun that aims for this long and reloads this long and is just this derpy. And add to the fact that it's not even a Russian derp gun. So it's got that strike against it as well. And you see that half these shots are missing and he's not even done a thousand damage yet. So it doesn't look too promising to begin with. However, this map, I mean, this is Swamp. It's played out pretty much how you would think it has played out. This map does afford some opportunities to a fast light tank with good view range. And having said, how does he get the damage? Well, bear in mind there are a pair of waffles on the enemy team as well. The tier 9 and the tier 10 waffles are, you know, they're, they're really nice uh, juicy targets for this gun. That T49 also, in theory, a really nice juicy target. And it looks initially like, you know, he's taking a big chunk of health out of that guy, but no, it's him and... Adler have both fired at the same time. Neither of them particularly did a high amount of damage, and the T-49 isn't exactly a highly armoured target, so even against a T-49, he's still only done, what was that, 300 odd damage? I can't quite see exactly, but it's not particularly impressive so far. Now he looks north because our tanks that cross the north, well, they're being mopped up, they have been mopped up, it's just an E-75 remaining, and he's about to get mobbed by several enemy tanks. So, so far, utterly predictable for Swamp. This map tends to go how it goes. Although, these days, more and more people are not crossing the bridges. And so it ends up being a lot kind of campier. And the weird thing about this map, and I've talked about this in other replays, is that when people actually use their brains, it kind of stops the map from working correctly. Uh, but it's not exactly a well-made map anyway, I have to say. So he's pushing into the middle. He's trying to get to um, the, the, you know, the, this this particular northern uh, lump that's rising out, the lump of ground. Hill, there we go. Little hill. That's what I was looking for. Manages to uh, get a fairly decent hit on the E100. And he's just looking to do some flanking fire at this point. Because these guys, although they are in a fairly defensive position, with their backside sticking out, you know, that's nice for him. And he actually managed to set the E100 on fire as well, but the guy uh, extinguished uh, just in time. So, there we go, another hit into the other tank that's defending, the 215B, and, um, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a tank over there. That entire flank is now open, uh, but 
they don't know that there's nobody defending from the cap. They have no way of knowing that. Now this is altogether hairy looking. I don't know if he spotted at this point. He may or may not be. The 183 certainly looked like he was looking in his direction. And then things get even more interesting because, hello, yeah, well, that's a pattern. Now, fortunately, the pattern ignores him totally and goes for the Object 140, and that's going to be to the pattern's cost because rear armour, engine deck, hello, yeah, that was a penetrating HG shell, and suddenly he's not feeling so cocky anymore. So, this was a two versus one situation. That pattern really did a silly thing there. He just so focused on the fact that your Object 140 was there, and maybe he thought the fact that Death Star was kind of there to back him up would be a decisive factor, but the 140 was able to park himself far back enough that uh, the Death Star just didn't have shots, and by ignoring the fact that IGL was able, you know, to, to put one in his rear armour, well, that cost him dearly. And the, the damage, with that penetrating hit, the damage is starting to rack up now. We're now over 3,000 damage. This Death Star might also be a one-shot kill, and IGL decides to do a risky thing, and it pays off. He just drives around on the move, shoots that Death Star, and that is a very dangerous gun out of the game. But that could have so easily gone wrong with this gun. That so easily could have gone into the ground. At which point, he would have been in trouble. Now, he could have gotten past the Death Star fast enough that the Death Star would then have to traverse his whole tank to get his gun round on IGL. But the question is, could IGL have gotten to effective cover before the Death Star could get his gun round to take the shot? Because the Death Star almost certainly would have had a shot. But, as an aggressive tactic, it worked. The Death Star was not expecting anybody to just drive around that corner. And now he's not in the game anymore. So we're down to less than 10 shells. Or is that exactly 10 shells? I can't see how many heat he's got. It's either 2 heat or 3 heat. And he took a blind shot at where he thought that uh, Waffle Panzer IV might have been. Don't think it actually did anything, though. He's looking for another shot, but no, that guy's firmly behind a rock. And this is a prime target for him. He can potentially one-shot this guy by hitting him in the gun shield. He can definitely one-shot him now. And he takes another shot. Misses. He's down to 6 HE now. He's still, you know, he's gone over 3,000 damage. But he has to do, like, at least another 3,000 odd more. Nearly 4,000 more damage. And he doesn't have that many shells left. So how's he going to do it? Well, you'll just have to... Find out the hard way. <laughs> so he takes a peek over, and that turns out to be a mistake, because that IS-8 is waiting for him. That's the first damage he's taken all game, though. But keeping all your hit points in a scout tank is always paramount, and he basically lost his hit points for absolutely no purpose. They were totally wasted. It wasn't that he was trading damage, it was that he took a shot and it didn't get him anything in return. So he takes another peek. Maybe he figures that IS-8 thinks he won't do it again, and he's staying far back enough that the bushes should keep him covered, but if the IS-8 is a bit further forward, it's going to be that you can see on the minimap there with the, the grey transparent circle around IGL's uh, tank marker. If he's in auto-spotting range, the bushes do not matter. They do not count at all. So the ST, who's full health, is looking to push, apparently. We know they've got a Waffle defending the base. We have two medium tanks, and we have IGL. So, although it's uh, four versus four, I'm not sure it's particularly an equal fight at this point. It all comes down to, oh, that's a nice shot. Uh, well, that evens things a bit, but they've taken out our E50M at the same time, so... Uh, it all comes down to who are the better players at this point, and maybe a bit of luck as well, because they have the better defensive positions for sure. The E100, the Japanzer, uh, not the Japanzer E100, the Waffle E100, being at the back, he can actually cover quite nicely uh, the two heavies, and the ST doesn't seem to be playing particularly smartly. Now, the good news is the E75 is fairly low health, but the IS-8 still has a lot of health. And the Waffle Panzer probably does as well. This time, the shot of the ISA actually misses, very fortunately. He could have taken the hit, but you don't want to. And this time, he actually does do some damage in return, so it's not wasted. So he's looking to take a shot at the Waffle, who he spots is trying to get back. And he's now hopefully unspotted by the ISA. 
hopefully won't be spotted by the waffle, leads the shot, and it's away. It's a beautiful shot. It actually goes in for a, a full roll. Well, an over 900 damage roll, anyway. And that's another big chunk of damage that's on his, uh, his counter now, so... It's starting to, you know, we're starting to look like uh, it might be doable. Rear of an ISA, another penetrating HE shell. That's just about as perfect as it could be. You need rear armor for the HE to actually have any chance of penning for a, a majority of tanks, especially when they're tier 9s and 10s. Of course, stuff like the Waffle is an exception, but uh, although it started out with not looking too great he's now got two one-shot kill enemies basically and so the fact that he's really down on his shells he just needs to hit them now the e75 it's probably better if we get him with the he because to get him with the heat that would actually require aiming and the heat penetration on this it's not exactly superb I think the 152 mil heat that the Russians get has better pen. Just off the top of my head, I might be wrong about that. But I think I'm right in saying that the heat on this, although you'd see it and think, oh, heat ammo, that must be really good. It isn't actually. None of the shells this gets are particularly well penetrating. So there's the E75, and he's going back into cover, so he takes a risk and takes the shot, and it goes in. It's good, but... Having set off across the open when the enemies know exactly where he is, the last remaining enemy, well, that's kind of risky, and yeah, hello. Hello, Waffle, please don't shoot me. Now, if I'm counting correctly, the Waffle fires four shots. IGL must have had his mouth in his, uh, his heart in his mouth, paused just that bit to fire, and bam. There we go. The scores... Ace Tanker, a couple of ribbons, High Caliber, and Confederate. You'd think, looking at that, that is the least impressive amount of medals and awards from the entire batch of winners that we've had. But let's look at the damage. 7,201 damage with five kills. And if you get five kills and a Confederate medal at the same time, suddenly that seems a lot more impressive. That was enough for 2,097 base XP in this thing, the T-49. I, I was just... Uh, when I got to the end of this replay for the first time, I was like, okay, okay, now that was a worthy winner. That was actually fairly damn incredible. Yes, he had some luck, and... Uh, yes, uh, he had, at the end there, the enemies that he was facing, they were low health, and he had some very good penetrating hits. He had people ignoring him at the wrong time. He had shells that flew exactly where he wanted them to. That one shell he fired on the move, that so could have easily missed. And if the Death Star had been waiting for him and blapped him in the face, that probably would have been game over. But... As it was, he kept his nerve, he uh, had luck in the right places, and he fired, and he fired, and he fired, and the shots did their work, and he walked away with over 7,000 damage, more than enough to beat Emperor Nefarious 1, unfortunately for Emperor Nefarious, but it was just, it was damn impressive, and... Although it probably would be quite hard to replicate that kind of performance in a T-49, it's very interesting, uh, just interesting to see that it is capable of that kind of high damage performance in a tier 10 battle. He did by far the best of anyone on his team, unsurprisingly. So there we go, the tier 7 and 8 winners. Now a small announcement before I wrap up the video, for the tier 10, well tier 9 and 10 winners, and I say tier 9 and 10 because actually we have a tier 9 winner, which is, uh, well, we'll see. But all three winners are going to be over 10,000 damage. In fact, the fourth place was over 10,000 damage. That's how fierce the competition was for tier 9 and 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each of the tier 9 and 10 winners their own replay. We're going to break it down a bit. And although obviously that stretches out the number of days I'm doing contest results, I don't think it would be fair to the three winners of the uh, the tier 9 and 10 bracket to uh, chop up their videos when clearly 10,000 plus damage a piece they're going to be something special so we're going to have three of those coming out over the next three days and I will uh, hopefully do them justice
So, if you enjoyed this set of replays, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay tuned for more.